Merlin's beard. Yes, this is awesome. I need to get it on this. Wow, what a rush. It's too bad the sequel didn't quite hit the same peaks this one did, huh, Galahad? Galahad. Hello? Right, I'm obviously not here. I'm gonna go start the show. Ha 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 fake laugh. That was certainly fun, wasn't it? It's Kingsman 1 versus Kingsman 2 on Movie Fuse. Cox on the table, I believe is the expression. I wasn't expecting a lot of the Kingsman one. Matthew Vaughn is a solid director for sure, but the movie looked like an over the top, old school James Bond. Why didn't I expect a lot out of that premise? That's freaking awesome. And the movie was. A big reason it works so well is the stellar cast of quirky characters. Taron Egerton plays the unconventional, rebellious character Eggsy. It's a pretty standard set of traits to give the protagonist in a movie like this, but if it ain't broke, why fix it? The real star is Colin Firth as his mentor Galahad. A very unconventional role for him to take on and one that worked perfectly. His calm demeanor, his expert knowledge and proper table etiquette and gun care oddly work well together. Then there's the always on point Michael Caine who automatically bumps the film's quality while Mark Strong gives a great supporting role and provides some light laughs along the way as Merlin. The sequel brings back the whole crew, sans Kane. And even though Princess Tildy had a very small and tight hole, I mean role, in the first film, she gets an expanded one here. The big new addition is the American chapter of the Kingsman known as the Statesman. Big names like Channing Tatum and Jeff Bridges make appearances here and there, but are extremely underutilized. And the trailers definitely overplayed the roles they were going to have in this film. The same can be said for Halle Berry, who just doesn't have a lot of exciting things to do. There's actually a big surprise celebrity in this that has more screen time than the aforementioned Statesman. Relatively unknown actor Pedro Pascal has the biggest role in the Statesman department and does a fair amount of the action this time around. Using his trusty electric rope, he wrangles up the villains. This is me wrangling. Speaking of, Kingsman really delivers in the bad guy department in both flicks. I really enjoy Julianne Moore's drug peddling, overly cheerful personality as Poppy. However, much like the other newcomers, she's underutilized and goes down unceremoniously. It took me like 14 takes to say all that. Just that sentence. She also pales in comparison to the completely unexpected performance by Samuel L. Jackson as Valentine in the first Kingsman. He has so many little ticks, from his hilarious lisp to his overreaction to blood. He also rocks a mean hat. Guy's got style. And his henchwoman is just as cool with her swords for legs. She's certainly better than the bionic commando in the sequel. Sophia Butella, I for sure butchered that last name, proves time and time again, no matter what ridiculous role they put her in, she's still gonna look smoking hot. Bottom line, these movies have really big casts, but the original Kingsman plays off the strengths better. A secret, sophisticated underground organization simply known as the Kingsmen recruit only the brightest and the best of the bunch to join this elite cause. Which is to keep England and the rest of the world safe. In order to join this team of well-dressed agents, you need to go through a series of grueling tests and receive top marks. And much like Will Smith in Men in Black, Eggsy is not your typical candidate. He's brash, doesn't play by the rules, and has trouble following orders. Much like me on Wednesday night at Bowling League. Yet even with all his issues, Firth's Galahad sees a potential inside. The overall world of Kingsman makes up for the somewhat tired trope, as Eggsy is slowly introduced into the crazy gadgets, unique locations, and interesting people that populate his new world. And things really kick into gear when Valentine unleashes his secret weapon, a software that can emit a hidden frequency triggering the most primitive and aggressive instincts in each human in race range of the smart device. It's a great premise, and one that reminds me of something you'd see in an afternoon cartoon show. The whole thing somehow manages to feel grounded. I can't say the same for the sequel, which hits levels of Looney Tunes. The movie starts up well enough with a really fun car chase as Eggsy is attacked by a rejected Kingsman applicant. And fighting in a car is all the rage these days in film, as we had one not too long ago in Deadpool and even more recently in Atomic Blonde. It's not much further on that the entire agency is targeted and obliterated by Poppy. I was pretty disappointed Kingsman 2 already went this route for a couple reasons. Number one, this is only the second movie in the series. This happened way too quickly for my liking. And number two, it was so easy to accomplish. When you're talking about a title of The Golden Circle, I expected some deep-seated underground society that had all these inner workings and uh, organizations at their disposal. But it's really none of that. It's also a shame we had to leave England so early on as there was a charm there that made the franchise stand on its own from others. 
Even more puzzling is we're introduced to the American version of the Kingsmen known as the Statesmen, who are supposed to have all this wealth and, and far more reach than the Kingsmen did, yet their, their group seems tiny. It's like, it's like five people. Anyway, Eggsy and the company need the Statesmen's help to steal an antidote from Poppy to save a large population of infected drug users. If you hadn't seen Kingsman and you wanted me to quickly summarize it, I would say it's James Bond on speed. If you hadn't seen Kingsman 2, I would say it's Spy Kids on bath salts. There are a lot of moments where things just get too bonkers for my liking, especially late in the game where we see a stadium-sized human zoo complete with people in individual cages stacked one on top of the other. There's certainly nothing subtle about these two movies, which is both a gift and a curse. I quite enjoyed seeing a church full of deplorables kill each other in savage fashion, but a man being ground up and served in a burger was a bit too much for my taste pun intended. I'm glad the director doesn't pull his punches, but some of them never really landed for me, and I'm not sure they needed to be thrown in the first place. As the tech continues to grow, there are more and more moments where I have no idea how a scene is filmed, and that's why I love watching movies. The level of talent on display is simply phenomenal. I turned to my brother in the seat next to me and said, how the hell are they doing this? This is amazing. And he's sitting over there with this stupid trademark grin on his face, just eating it all up. This momentum carries Kingsman 2 for a good 30 minutes until eventually the steam starts to run out and the weak script really shows through. The effects are big and bombastic, but not necessarily interesting. There are some very enjoyable action scenes here, but the magic is somehow missing. I think it is partially because things are just so crazy this time around, or it could have been the badly kept secret that Firth Galahad, who has returned because they retconned his death from the first film, doesn't really do much for a long time. This does lead to a few fun gags, but with so much ludicrous stuff already on display, it felt unneeded. The same can be said for a plot twist that amounts to very little. Vaughn clearly knows the most popular scene from his first flick is the church massacre, so he attempts to recreate the style a few times over. Especially in the last fight, but the music's just nowhere near as good as Freebird. And that can be said throughout this picture. The music's just not that good. I'm sure this was just coincidental, but the song Take Me Home Country Road is featured heavily in both Kingsman 2 and Logan Lucky, which just released a few weeks earlier, also contains Channing Tatum and is a much better film. The first Kingsman is paced far better than its sequel, mixing the action and smarter storyline in perfectly. There is more polish in two, but I like the grittier, bloodier look of number one. Video game-like action can only stretch a film so far before the audience starts searching for a point to it all. Country road. While I didn't hate Kingsman 2, I don't think it's bad by any means, I do think it is a big step back from the first. There's plenty of humor and stylized action in play, but it's missing the charm and frankly the class of the first. Now I'd love to hear from you. Did you like the two CGI robot guard dogs, or are you more in my line of thinking? Less is more. Leave a comment, vote for your winner, and remember, this is more than just reviews, this is movie feuds. I never understand villain logic either. This, this woman Poppy is a multi-billionaire. She's only got two guard dogs. Why not a robot hawk or two? She's got a couple old busted landmines and some stupid robot dogs. G give us something from Horizon Zero Dawn. You got the money. Go through that catalog. Thanks for watching the video. Feel free to check me out on social media platforms for credibility purposes. Intern Sheila should be putting up some graphics for you to digest, I believe. Otherwise, you'll be out on the curb like your mom. Gotta move on. You can also check me out on patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Throw me a buck or two if you want. I run this channel alone. It's, a, it's almost a full-time job, honestly. Thanks for your time. Sheila, the graphics, now.